In this video, we're going to be getting a little bit closer to our proof of the central limit theorem, although we're probably actually going to finish it in the next video rather than this video, as I originally thought. Okay, so we need to think about the individual elements of the central limit theorem. One of the key elements of the central limit theorem is that it concerns the sample mean. So the sample mean of a variable x is defined as being equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of our individual xi in our sample. And if we assume that our individual xi in our sample are, let's say, iid with sort of mean, mu, and variance sigma squared, then it's quite easy for us to find out the expected value of x bar n along with its variance. So the expected value of x bar n is just equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the expected value of xi. And I'm able to do this just because the, expect the expectations operator is a linear operator. And we know that the expected value of xi is just itself mu. So we can sort of rewrite this whole thing as just being equal to 1 over n times n mu, which just leaves us over with mu in the end. Okay, so that's unsurprising. We know that the sample mean is itself an unbiased estimator of the population mean. So there's no real news there. Now, if we go ahead and we find the variance of x bar n, then what we have to do is we have to know that the variance of some sort of constant a times a random variable y is equal to a squared times the variance of that random variable y. So using that here, we are sort of one over n term actually becomes one over n squared. And then because I've assumed that the actual xi's are independent of one another, then I can just write this out as the sum from i equals one to n of the variance of the individual xi because I don't need to worry about the covariance terms because I'm assuming they're independent. So that means that I'm just left with one over n squared times n sigma squared. So our variance of a, our sample mean is just sigma squared over n. So when you sort of write it like this, it becomes quite apparent why the sample mean itself is a consistent estimator of the population mean as well, because you can see that as n tends to infinity, this variance is actually going to tend to zero, and we're still going to be sort of centered around the population mean. So that's all okay. Okay, so the next step we need to sort of make is we need to actually convert our sample mean into something which has a mean of zero and a variance of one. And that process is known as standardizing the runner variable. So if we standardize the sample mean, actually let's change color a bit, that's going to be equal to n times x bar n minus n times mu, all divided by root n times sigma. And it's quite easy to then go ahead and prove that Zn actually has a mean of zero and it has a variance of one. So that's not actually itself that difficult to do. But what we can do is we can gain some sort of valuable insight into Zn by sort of writing out in long form. And by long form, I mean replacing x bar n with its actual sort of definition. So that means that I've got on the top, I've got n, times x bar n. Well, x bar n is just 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the individual xi minus n mu. And then I'm dividing all of that by root n sigma. Okay, so these n's are going to cancel with one another and we're just going to be left on the top with the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus n mu. Okay, in the next video, we're going to pick up from where we left off here, and we're going to be a little bit closer to proving the central limit theorem. I'll see you then.